Hi and welcome. In this video, we'll look at what's new in Microfocus Desktop Containers 12.1 and Turbo. We'll start by looking at the new Turbo Hub server, and then we'll look at changes to Studio. The Turbo Hub server is a service that allows you to host all of your Turbo content on prem. So, with Microfocus Desktop Containers 12 with the Turbo subscription, we introduced the notion of the Turbo command line interface as well as the Turbo repository. Typically, when you use the Turbo command line interface, you're going to be interacting with Turbo.net. That means all of the content goes back and forth between the server on the internet and the local client. With the new Turbo Hub server, this allows users in the system to use the Turbo command line against the local hub. This way, if you wanted to build your own applications or images, and you wanted to store sandbox data, that data could live on premise instead of having to be on the internet. It also automatically caches or proxies content from the Turbo.net hub if you set up federation. It syncs the sandbox data from your Turbo containers and the new portable applications, and it also facilitates automatic updates to those portable applications. Let's take a look at how this works. So here I have the new hub management interface, and you can see I've got a number of repos that I've already created. There are really three ways to create a repository. The first way is that you can synchronize that from Turbo.net. To do that, you come into Federation and go into Federation Settings, and you specify an API key. To do this, you go to the Turbo.net hub, you log in, and you create this API key. You can then either manually specify the repositories that you want to sync down, or you can turn on this automatic forwarding. If you turn on automatic forwarding, then the first time that a user asks for a particular image, it will then request that image from Turbo.net, cache it to the local server, and then service that request. Subsequent users will pull it directly from the hub. You can see here I've already cached the Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Opera, and Oracle JRE version from Turbo.net to this server. Additionally, the second way you can build these applications is with the Turbo command line interface. So you can do a Turbo push and push that to the Turbo hub once you've built your image. The last way is through Studio, and we'll take a look at that later on in the presentation. So just to prove to you that this works, we'll come over here and you'll see I can run Turbo config just to verify that the turbo command is configured to talk to my local hub. So you'll see instead of pointing to turbo.net, it's pointing to the local turbo hub. So I can now do something like turbo run clean JRE. And what we should see is that it starts up the clean container, but first it has to download Java. So it goes out and it downloads Java from the local hub, just as though it was the Turbo.net repository, but coming from your local machine, saving you internet traffic. Now, obviously, in Microfocus Desktop Containers 12, most of the time you were going to serve users' applications. You would serve those through the Microfocus Desktop Container server or as an executable. You did that because there was really no way locally to interact or have the user interact with Turbo. Now you can do that. This is an excellent opportunity if you wanted to use Turbo on the back end, but Zenworks on the front end, it may actually make it a bit easier to create the Zenworks applications to stream off of the Turbo Hub. So there you have it. That's the Turbo Hub in action. Next, I want to talk about some changes to the Microfocus Desktop Container Studio. This is the Studio version that is included with all versions of Microfocus Desktop Containers, including the Turbo subscription. Uh, and then there are some additional features in the Turbo version. So first, there's a new template wizard. The new template wizard uses the Turbo.net repository. This should mean that templates stay more current and that you have more of them. And then there's the new clean packaging wizard, which allows you to spin up that empty package container so that you can then install simple applications and package those easily.
In the turbo version of Studio, there are some additional changes. So of course you get all of the changes with Microfocus Desktop Containers Studio, but you also have access to all of the Turbo.NET templates. So everything you see on Turbo.NET can be accessed as a template through Studio. You can now manage your IP restrictions through the GUI. So if, for instance, you've set up a particular browser application to only get to limited sites, you can now control those sites through Studio instead of having to do it through the command line. And there's a new type of application called portable applications that allow you to basically embed the Turbo client inside the executable so that you can have all of the benefits of the Turbo application. For instance, you can register the local shortcuts, you can sync the sandbox, and you can even automatically update the application, but do so in a standalone executable that you can give to users on a thumb drive or any other method where they can just double click it, it will then register and begin sandbox and updating if that's what you want to do. So let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of these changes. So here I have the turbo version of Studio and we'll start by going to the new configuration wizard. When you go to the new configuration wizard you'll see there's this new build application from a template. That was there previously but when you clicked it it didn't talk to the turbo.net hub it talked to another repository. So this will take just a minute depending on the speed of your internet connection. So here you see the list of applications. They're categorized because there's quite a few of them. If you click browsers, for instance, you can then see the applications that are available. And these are the ones that are available to non-Turbo.net subscribers. You can then choose to log in with your Turbo credentials, in which case you just specify your normal Turbo.net credentials and it will then communicate with the hub to find out if there are additional applications that you're entitled to. So now that I'm logged in, you can see when I click browsers, there's quite a few additional browsers, localized browsers, uh, for instance, the German, French, Spanish versions. You've got Opera, you've got Tor, another of a, a number of other browsers. You've got quite a few more chat applications. Previously, there was just Messenger, so on and so forth. So from here, you can simply select the application that you want. We'll pick Messenger 301, click Next, and it will then download that from Turbo, and the rest of the process is the same as what you're used to, where you can specify the sandbox, an output file, and then choose to build or publish or run the application. In my case, I'll just say build the application now. That will give me an ISV application. So there you have it, packaging through the new Turbo Hub templates. So we'll go ahead and save that. The second capability we talked about was the ability to do clean packaging. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new package. I'm going to say Configuration Wizard. And if you're a Microfocus Desktop Containers customer without Turbo, this is a new capability. If you're a Turbo user, this is capability that you had but can now be introduced or implemented through Studio. So you have this install an application into a container. Unlike traditional packaging where you take a before picture and an after picture, what this does is it allows you to pick an application. So in my case, for instance, I've got the FileZilla application. I can select that and it basically spins up the clean container as the administrative user behind the scenes. It automatically creates the needed mount point, and then it goes ahead and runs the installation that you set within that container. And so here you see Fire, FileZilla comes up, and even though I already have FileZilla installed on my machine, because it's installed, installing in the container, then I can go ahead and just do the install, and it doesn't even know about my local install. So this really saves you the time of having to maintain a clean machine that you can package into. And so now I have FileZilla and I can go in and I can customize the application. So for instance, I might want to come in here and go to settings and updates and turn off the check for updates since this is a virtual app and I'm going to be maintaining it. So then I'll go ahead and 
close out FileZilla, and you'll see it now knows that that application has ended, and it's basically building that image, and then it will open that image up in Studio so that you can do additional changes or customizations that you may want to do. So it's now finished importing it. Because there were two icons created during that install, it brings me up and asks me to select the startup files. I want to get rid of the uninstaller. Say yes, next. And then I can specify my new folder. Put FileZilla here. And again, we can choose to run or publish the application. We'll just go ahead and put it here. And now I have my application that's ready for me to do additional changes to within Studio. And I did all of that without having to maintain a clean image. All right, so next, those are the, the kind of core features for both MicroFocus Desktop Containers and Turbo Studio. Next, we want to look at two other small changes for Turbo specifically. So if you're a Turbo subscriber, then when you come in and open up an application or build an application that requires IP restrictions, you'll see here I've opened this up and I can see now inside Studio the two restrictions that have been defined. So in this case, I'm blocking everything but this one URL. And so that one URL will be hit with Firefox. Everything else will be blocked. Previously, you had to do this all through the Turbo command line interface. We're focusing on trying to make this easier to use for the average administrator. And so you can define new routes here. You can remove routes here. Um, and you can add both blocks or denies from here. Finally, there's a new capability called a portable executable. So in my case, I've actually already created a portable executable, but you'll see here, I could turn this application into a portable application. To do this, I simply select portable application, and then I can specify some options. You can see if you are running this on Windows 8 or higher, or you have the on Windows 7, all the machines you're gonna run this on have the latest.NET framework, you can pick that. If you pick Windows XP, it actually embeds the .NET stack within the application. You can configure the isolation layer, and you can also configure when this executable is run, does it have access to my documents? Does it synchronize the settings and data back to the Turbo repository or the Turbo hub? Does it automatically check for updates? And does it show the launch options on startup? In my case, when I built my app portable application, I actually had all of these checked. So we'll come up down here and find that application. The portable application that I've created is actually this FileZilla application. And so when I run it, you'll see there's this executable. It's standalone. I can give it to anybody via a USB stick. But when I run it, unlike the traditional ISV application where it just runs, you'll see the turbo.net. And if you're not logged into the hub, it'll ask you for your credentials because you're supposed to sync your data. And so it's gone ahead and it's checked to see if there's any changes on the server, whether it's an automatic update or it's sandbox changes that need to come down and then it's run the application. And if I go in and I make a change, for instance, I'll come into Site Manager and I'll add a new site called MF and add ftp.microfocus.com and say OK. Then when I close this application, you'll see it saves the container state, basically saving the sandbox to my Turbo Hub. I can now take that executable go to another machine, run the same executable, and it will pull down my sandbox. So that's the changes to Turbo Studio. That's the new portable applications and how it plays with the hub. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found 
the new information about what's new in Microfocus Desktop Containers 12.1 and Turbo to be exciting and useful to you. Thank you. Thank you.